Vandalism doesn't have to be mindless anarchy and destruction. Some vandals have such a creative flair to their, for want of a better word, work, that even the most law-abiding of citizens surely can't help but smile and say, now that's clever. These are random acts of vandalism that are pure genius. Number 15. Traffic Barrel Monster. Most people are familiar with the sight of traffic and construction barrels. We would submit to you that our newly designed traffic barrel is a... They are orange plastic barrels with white reflective stripes used to channel vehicles near construction sites. Traffic companies own them throughout the United States and they can cost upwards of $100 each. The price tag may make you wonder why there are so many of them out there, but they are a necessary part of traffic management. As it turns out, they are an essential component of artwork as well. Joe Carnival turned heads back in 2009 with the creation of a traffic barrel monster. He cut, shaped, and crafted the orange barrels we all know so well into a tall monster with teeth, arms, legs, and a terrifying gaze. The statue was present at a state fair, but that's not only where you'd recognize it. Traffic barrel monsters also started popping up on city streets, much to the delight of passing motorists. The only thing is that while this random act of vandalism was pure genius, it was also just that, vandalism. Joe Carnival was arrested for his art because he stole, cut, and screwed the traffic barrels, which is a misdemeanor in North Carolina. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all. It'll take about five seconds to complete. Uh, let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it, it actually works. Number 14, Ant-Man vs. Yellow Jacket. Ant-Man is a 2015 thriller and science fiction movie with a master thief called Scott who can make himself really small, like an ant, obviously. <laughs> His arch Marvel movie nemesis is known as Yellow Jacket. The movie itself is pretty popular, but the popularity doesn't end with the film. It has made its way into the art world, too. Slinkachu was tasked with launching the Little People Project in 2006, which involved tiny superhero action figures positioned all around London to capture people's attention. These models were crafted by German company Pizer, but installed and photographed by British man Slinkachu. While he wasn't all that into commercial projects, he was constantly contacted by Marvel UK and agreed to be a part of the Ant-Man shoot and project. Everyday objects like broken lampposts and grazed road bollards were chosen for the tiny figures. A bollard that had been hit by a car and sat at a precarious angle all of a sudden looked like Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket were to blame. The Londoners loved it. Number 13, Alligator. The most intelligent and creative thing many of us can muster up to write or draw on a dirty vehicle is clean me. Yeah, so original and more likely to annoy the owner than anything else. But imagine if someone came up to your dirty vehicle and created a work of art with the muck. You're unlikely to be all too annoyed by that or in a hurry to clean it off. There are instances of such art cropping up all over the internet, and the more it's out there, the more people are getting involved. An example of such dirty vehicle artwork is an alligator that appeared on the side of a white dirty truck. It was incredibly detailed with shadowing, ridges, and scales. And we're sure the truck owner had no problems with it being there. The artwork was completed in Russia, and there's every reason to believe it's by the same Russian street artist who became famous for the giant owl he created on the back of a truck. Nikita Golubev from Moscow has a medical background, not an artistic one, but he's been working on his art skills his whole life. We're pretty sure it's now paid off. Number 12. Creativity. No one should put a cap on your creativity, but there may come a time where you wonder, hmm, is that creative or is that an act of vandalism? There's a reason many people won't put their artist tag on things they have altered in the streets, and that's because technically it is vandalism to add your mark to something in public, even in the name of creativity. Just think of Banksy, for example. So what falls into that gray area that's technically vandalism but is more likely to put a smile on a police officer's face than see them pull out an arrest warrant? An example would be a blue trash 
trash can in a public place that has a wide gap for people to put their rubbish in. Someone added eyeballs and a biscuit to turn it into the Cookie Monster. In another instance, a billboard by AHRQ.gov said, This year, thousands of men will die from stubbornness. Someone used spray paint to write, No, we won't, on it, which pretty much reaffirms what they're trying to say. So while these are random acts of vandalism, there's no denying that they are also pure genius. Number 11. How Athletic Complex We're pretty sure this artist needs to spend a bit more time in the art academy and maybe a few nights in a jail cell too. We're just not sure if this random act of vandalism is genius for how it stands out or dumb for how it defaces public property. In July 2018, the Howe Police Department was called to the Howe Athletic Complex, where someone had applied some B-grade artwork to the outer walls of the building and fences. Someone, or more than one person, had used red rust-oleum painter's touch 2x to draw a rabbit on the wall. The paint was found nearby. The rabbit face has a hand on each side pulling gang signs as well as the name of the gang and the year. But that wasn't all the vandals got up to while on the property alone. They used white spray paint on a black fence and drew two more rabbits in different places. The rabbit was holding a pipe and a cigarette in one hand and a detailed face in the other. It would surely be a process of elimination to work out who's in the gang and who's sporting the signs of red paint on their fingers. The police can then reward them for their efforts. Number 10. Drinks Can. They say that one man's trash is another man's treasure. In the case of aluminum soda and beer cans, however, most people would agree that one man's trash is still another man's trash. After all, what on earth are you supposed to do with a can once you've finished your drink other than send it to recycling or a landfill? Well, you could give it to Noah Doletta, a sculptor from Detroit. When you think of sculptures, you probably think wood, scrap metal, and wire. They form the basis of most contemporary artworks. But Noah decided to be a little different, and by by doing so, he stood out from the crowd. Upstairs for thinking, young man. Noah takes a plain aluminum can and dents it. Okay, easy, right? Wrong. He dents them methodically and forms geometric shapes that turn a waste object into a work of art. Noah said the technique is scratch, dent, and crease, and the results are astounding. Each can is hand dented, so there are no fancy machines to do all the hard work for him. He then displays them in a box on a stand, rotating for people to see all angles. Number 9. Creative Vandalism Vandalism doesn't always have to be about destroying someone's property so that it causes a lot of inconveniences to fix. It can also be about enhancing something, seeing the beauty in it, and making a work of art. Instances of creative vandalism can occur everywhere you look, such as these examples. A beautiful dandelion growing out of bricks is the only piece of greenery in the area, and an eco-conscious person is obviously trying to protect it. They created a mini gate system and a sign that says, Do Not Touch similar to what you would find in an art gallery. Another person took vandalism to the next level by drawing a beautiful head and shoulders on a white fence so that the overhanging bush above looked like her hair. The result was impressive. Someone else captured this creativity too by using an image of Popeye the Sailor Man on a fence to make it look like the green bush was spinach out of a can. As it turns out, vandalism doesn't have to be an eyesore. Number 8. Bird. Graffiti exists in many shapes and forms. Some people, often kids, do it just to annoy the property owners. Other times, it's an expression of art and is really quite awe-inspiring. This bird is one such time. The backside of buildings, especially those facing into alleyways, is never anything attractive. Often, they are dark, dingy, and have downpipes and eyesores all over the place. So, what do you do when you've got an ugly building? Well, you beautify it with artwork. A very talented artist has drawn a bird on the backside of a building that looks like it's perching on a downpipe. Underneath it is a pile of bones from various other birds and animals. The bird was looking down on them, almost as if the bird was the one that put them there. Art critics view the piece in two ways. Either the bird has eaten the animals, or the artwork represents reform and feelings of regret. Whatever the reason for it, it sure takes care of that ugly problem in the best way possible. After all, who doesn't love birds? Number 7. Lend a hand. 
Hard work doesn't have to be all rainbows and butterflies and positivity. It can also be subtle, discreet, and powerful in its meaning. Hidden away on the side of a staircase is three small black figures, and that's all it takes to form a powerful message. It might be a random act of vandalism on a city street, but no one will be complaining when they come to understand what it means. Unless you own those stairs, and well, you might be a bit annoyed. The artwork shows a small person standing on a lower step, another on the level above holding a hand down to that person and a third on the top level looking down, almost as if they're stressed or confused. The artwork, while subtle, is supposed to represent how even though someone can move up the ladder or up the ranks, they can still provide help to those who need it down below. And even those who have gotten as far as they can go may not be genuinely settled and happy and may also be confused. Number 6. Homemade Bed IKEA doesn't typically offer furniture that has multiple uses. In fact, when you're building furniture from IKEA, you're lucky if you can put it together for its intended use. But if you're going to commit to any type of vandalism, then let it be on something you own and that can be of benefit. People started to realize fairly early on, particularly cat lovers, that the Ducktig doll bed from IKEA, which retailed for $19.99 at the time but goes on sale for $14.99, was the perfect size for a cat. IKEA may have been confused when grown-ups were snapping up these beds in bulk, but the truth came out fairly quickly. Because they come with bed linen and are reasonably sizable, cats think they make pretty cushy beds, and owners were happy to oblige. What's more, with a few minor modifications, they can be pretty darn adorable. Imagine coming home to your cat snuggled up with its head on a pillow and its body underneath the blankets. We're gonna hazard a guess and say there is nothing cuter. So while you might technically be committing vandalism for not using these beds as intended, it's perfectly okay if it's in the spirit of becoming a crazy cat lady or man. Number 5. Funny Boat Fiesolo is a beautiful seaside resort town in Venice, Italy. It is one of the largest beach resorts in the country and also sees some of the most tourists out of all villages and cities in Italy. But that title comes at a price, and that's increased vandalism by tourists and locals partying till the early hours. To avoid vandalism, the town has invested in all manner of security measures, and they are all really quite creative. They have security officers that stroll the area, but also lighthouses to illuminate the entire beach. They also have boats. That might seem a little strange as far as vandalism protection goes, but you haven't seen these boats. They have stairs to get onto them, then slides to get off of them, and they are the perfect way to provide tourists with something to do rather than vandalize the township. We're not a tourist guide, but while we're at it, we may as well point out a few of the fun things to do in Yasolo. If you happen to be passing through, you can visit the Parco Divertimente Yasolo Andia, a small park with rides, or pay a visit to the Caribbe Bay Water Park with a massive slide. The architectural lover will also enjoy paying a visit to Parish of San Giovanni Battista, a Catholic church. Just make sure you don't vandalize anything. Number 4. Minions one of the last places you want to be caught vandalizing is Singapore. The country is so proud that you can't even buy chewing gum there in case it ends up on city streets. If you're caught doing anything that destroys its image, imprisonment can follow. So it's often not worth the risk. Unless you're Lithuanian artist Ernest Zakarovic. Ernest was on a month-long residency in Singapore and wanted to express himself in the only way he knows how, through art. The problem is, well, that he's in Singapore. Fortunately, Ernest won the support of locals who happily offered up their private buildings for him to paint on. What he created was exceptional. He turned bollards and posts into little minions from the film Despicable Me. He also worked with any imperfections on those bollards, such as turning a concrete base into a pile of bananas and a chip out of the top into a broken open skull with brains showing. There is no limit to Ernest Zakarovic's creativity, except, well, you know, maybe the law. Good thing he wasn't chewing gum while creating these works of art. Number 3. Malaysia Vandalism Vandalism is a huge problem in Malaysia. According to council documents, the destruction of public properties in Selangor, Malaysia causes losses of more than RM 10 million every year, which is around 2.5 million US dollars or thereabouts. That figure may be higher in other cities, showing there's a real problem. The vandalism is widespread in urban parks, signage, bus stops, billboards, and people's fences and buildings. Basically, it's everywhere. While much of the graffiti 
and vandalism you'll find in Malaysia is ugly, unimaginative, and lacking creativity, some of it is quite the opposite. For example, on the side of a building in Penang, Malaysia, there is a cleverly painted picture of an older gentleman by the water. In the background is a boat in a river or lake. While the building may not be the cleanest or most well-maintained, it certainly gets points for its artwork being a pure genius act of vandalism that enhances, not detracts, from the building's appeal. The same can't be said for other parts of Malaysia, though. Not only do some people write and draw on private property, but they also put stickers and posters over road signs and other signage. Getting around a foreign country can be hard enough without not being able to see signs. Number 2. The Zebra If you haven't heard of Banksy by now, then you've undoubtedly been living under a rock. Banksy is a street artist based in England that has been a film director, artist, and political activist since the 1990s. He creates satirical street art and dark, humorous graffiti, and any works by him are worth a fortune. Why? Because no one knows who he is. Viewing Banksy's works of art is a pleasure, even if he is technically a vandal. It seems to pop up everywhere, and always with dramatic meanings that get you thinking. An example of that is street art he produced in Africa in 2009. On the side of a damaged building, he painted a zebra missing stripes and a woman hanging those stripes on a clothesline. According to many, the artwork supposedly depicts how seeing art as vandalism is stopping artists from being able to express their individuality and creativity. However, no one will probably know for sure. All we know is that this piece of artwork is Banksy's signature style, which means he made the journey to Africa, but for an unknown reason. We don't even know if that's what he meant. He's such a dark, mysterious artist. Number 1. Face of City is street art vandalism? You be the judge. This face of the city clearly puts people into two groups. It's vandalism and no, that's art. The face on the side of the building, making use of overhanging plants as hair, was a work of art by Dan Bergeron. Dan came up with the idea as a way to explore personal identity, social relationships, and how a face is a vessel. That means that under every face is something much, much more than meets the eye. The beauty is in the artwork, but also in the expression and clever way it's been displayed. All the artist has done is add lips, a nose, eyes, and the outline of a neck, ears, and chin. There is minimal use of materials and paint, and more use of what was already there, the bushes. The artwork is formed between the end shape of the bush, which forms the outline of the head. Even all the shadowing is in the right place. So while Dan may or may not have had permission to add the paint, we don't actually know, you couldn't really class that as vandalism, right? If you thought you were Picasso, have you changed your mind by now? Some of these random acts of vandalism are pretty intelligent and creative. Have you seen anything similar or even these in person? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!